Today I'm back at assembling the body on my 107 and I've got something special to show you. Welcome back to the Overland Legend. I'm Alan and I'm sharing the restoration of my 1955 Land Rover 107. Got some more bits here that I'm trying to sort out these last little bits um, for these vent levers. I got this uh, plated so that all looks good and that's fine and the springs and everything are fine. So that's a little bit damaged but uh, I think they'll still be fine. Bit of uh, patina and then yeah these are the, the knobs so this one's broken and this one uh, is really worn at the back there so I'm going to see if I can't get these little shafts replaced uh, I'll also plate these ones and then this is for the canopy this one's alright uh, but this one is broken off here so I think I'm just gonna see if I can get this piece of bolt welded on the top here and then this thing will be good to go and then I can send that for plating as well and that these should be the last of the little bits I've left this right till the end now so let's see if we can get that sorted out. We fixed the vent screws by replacing the threaded bar with some new bar and then soldered them into place. A quick test fit of the new screws showed that this was all going to fit nicely and work fine. The original rear lights for this vehicle are the pork pie lights, which I didn't have and they're ridiculously expensive to buy. So instead I bought these light clusters that I found from Holden in the UK. They look similar but also have an indicator included in the single unit. So they'll work nicely and they look like they come from that period. After soldering some of the bullet connectors onto the wire ends, I could fit them and plug them into the wiring harness. But then when I came to test them, something didn't seem right. It all worked, but there was something amiss. The indicators were working at different speeds, and the brake lights only worked on one light, and switched off the other light when I pushed the pedal down. I double checked all the wiring connections, and everything seemed to be fine. But then I narrowed it down to a faulty earth connection on one of the lights. So once I'd fixed that, everything worked fine, which was a huge relief. Before putting the wings on, I wanted to get the front wiring sorted out for the lights. I'm connecting the headlights via this nifty dual fused relay box that's specifically made for headlights. This way I can get the maximum current to the headlights to get the best performance. And it also means that I reduce the current that goes through the dash switch and the headlights are now on 30 amp fuses as well for added safety.
So the trick was to fit this relay box close to the headlights but out of sight. So I put it just behind where the Land Rover badge will go. So when I put the badge on you won't be able to see it. It was easy to wire it up and worked perfectly first time. So really impressed with this little unit. I got the bonnet on and noticed that it was looking a little off-center on the radiator panel, but I ignored it and carried on getting the wings fitted. Aligning all the body panels is always a challenge because nothing fits exactly right by itself. Somehow you have to get everything all together and then try and find the best fit. In the end I had the wings fitted, but the fit of the right and left wings didn't look right. The left wing was far off and the gap to the bonnet seemed a little bit much. On closer inspection the radiator panel was not properly centered and was sitting a little bit too far to the right, which is why the bonnet wasn't actually centered properly. So after spending the whole day doing this I decided to sleep on it and the next day sort it out. So I loosened everything again and then centered the radiator panel properly. This solved the problem. So now I had a nice even fit with both wings sitting properly the way they should. On the Series 1 the bonnet stays on the left hand side and not on the right hand side like on a Series 2 and Series 3. This presented a problem for the radiator overflow bottle which is off a Series 3 because I've got a Series 3 radiator on. So I had to make a plan to fit it a little bit lower to allow space for the bonnet stay to work properly. With the wings on I could fit the front park and indicator lights and finally finish off the front wiring. I had bought a set of dual park indicator Lucas lights. These are the original ones which have the glass lenses. I connected them briefly just to see how it worked.
These were fairly simple to fit because it was just a plug and play with the harness wiring. And then once I had it all fitted, I could have a look and see what it looked like and everything worked fine and looked great. Remember those old door handles that I disassembled and decided to restore? Well, they're coming back to life. It's now time to reassemble them. I got them back together and they seem to work fine, but I must be honest, they are a little bit old and rickety, but I really wanted to reassemble those old door handles that came from my original doors. So I'll fit them anyway and see how they go, and if they don't work well they're easy enough to change later. I fitted the handles to the doors and could now finally do a proper alignment with the lower cab section. Once I had the two doors on, I could see that this rear cab and seat box section needed to move forward and up on the left hand side. I still had the original spaces, which for a while I didn't know what they were for and then worked out what they are for. So I loosened a few bolts and managed to move the cab section forward a little bit and then insert the spaces on the inside of the chassis mount. Then when I refitted the doors, it was much better and I was happy with what uh, I got. It was all coming together nicely now with everything on on the lower section of the vehicle. But I'd also received something special that I'd been looking forward to for ages. <coughs> 
It's like Christmas getting these seats from Exmoor. I splashed out and decided to get uh, some new ones because I didn't even have the bases or anything. I just had some of the backrests and they weren't in good condition. And I decided to go for this original pattern uh, that came from that time. So it's quite different and it's something that I wouldn't be able to get here. But yeah, I'm really happy with these. They look really, really nice. So I think they are going to look fantastic and the colour is just going to work nicely I think with the colour that I've got on my vehicle. So looking forward to fitting these. We're going to see if they fit. I couldn't resist having a quick look and fitting one of these just to see what it was going to look like. But that's all I've got for this week as fitting the body is going a little bit slower than expected but we're inching along so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time when i hopefully get to putting the roof on